Welcome back to Dana Does Things. Earlier this week, I saw a video where someone hand carved a stamp and I thought, well, that looks pretty easy. I should try that. Then I realized that person probably had done this many, many times and that's why it looked so easy. So here I am, an absolute beginner, looking to see if stamp carving really is easy or not. I got the Speedball 7-piece Speedy Carve set that allegedly has all you need to start. It kinda does, but I'll key you into some other things you'll probably need along the way. In here we have the carver with three nibs, ink, an ink roller, and the carving block thing. And these instructions, which are literally one paragraph long. Okay, so not much to start from, but I did watch one YouTube video where I didn't really follow the process, so I think we're ready to roll. Okay, let's set aside the ink and roller and the extra nibs for now. First, we need to start with a design for our stamp. I went with a ginkgo leaf because they are super pretty and cool. I started by sketching it out inside a box that was how big I wanted the stamp. Now you could draw this straight on the carving block, but it'll be easier to draw it first and then use tracing paper to transfer it. Remember that when you carve your stamp, it needs to be the mirror image of what you want it to look like when you use the stamp. It doesn't matter as much with little designs, but would for sure matter with any writing or numbers. Once it's on the tracing paper, put it over the tracing block, pencil marking side down, and go back over the image. That will transfer the lead to the block. Now we are just gonna start carving. The instructions literally just say to carve away what you don't want, so I guess that's what we'll do. It makes sense for me to start with the smallest V-shaped nib and work up, so that's what we'll do. And we're trying to carve away any place where we want white space on our stamp. I'm going to go around it a few times, focusing on getting the right shape first, and then defining the little leaf veins. I learned a few things right away about carving. You want to keep the little cutter device pretty parallel with the carving block. If it's too up and down, then you'll gouge the block and you might make some mistakes. I also found it was easier to do more small carves, but that may just be down to inexperience. Next, I'm going to move up to the larger V-shaped carving nib. I'm just gonna to try to get a bit more of the excess off around the outside. I only did two passes with a small V-shaped nib for the veins, but as I see later, I could have gone over one or two more times. Next, I moved up to the U-shaped nib to clean up around the outside. So this is what I was left with. Now I'm going to use an X-Acto knife to cut out the stamp. I definitely should have left more of the carved out sides on the stamp for stability, especially on the stem, but now you get to learn from my mistakes. Now you can use the stamp as is, I think, but luckily where I work, I had a bunch of these leftover stamp handles, so I'm going to mount my stamp on there using scotch mounting tape. All right, it is time to try this out. I dabbed a little ink in my tray. In hindsight, I should have used more ink and perhaps not a glass dish as it didn't seem to coat my stamp very well, but I did get some ink on here, so let's go.
All right, it turned out not too bad. I'm gonna keep trying out the stamp while I review the kit. So I think that the kit is pretty comprehensive when it comes to supplies, but severely lacks on instruction. Though I'm sure there's lots of ways to carve and stamp, it would be helpful to know just a little bit more or even have instructions on how to change the nibs on the carver. The price is also a little expensive as you don't get a ton of the carving block, but getting it all in one kit as opposed to each item on their own is pretty helpful. Now how hard is carving? Like any craft, it'll take time to get really good at it, but it is fairly easy to start off. Though with the cost of the carving blocks, it makes it a little daunting to just play around and make mistakes. I would definitely say to try and get that on sale if you can. I am also not a huge fan of the roll-on ink. It didn't coat very well on my stamp, but that may be because I didn't use enough or maybe my stamp was lumpy somehow. Either way, the lack of instructions made it hard to judge whether it was the product or a user error. Overall, it was a fun process that took about half an hour from beginning to end. I've never rated things before, but I'm gonna give this a seven and a half out of 10. Fun and fairly easy, but a little expensive and lacking in instructions. Thanks for watching. Let me know what stamps I should carve next, and we'll see you next week.